It's The Cube, covering AWS Summit New York 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Here in New York City, we're live at Amazon Web Services AWS Summit. This is their big show that they take on the road. It kind of originates at Amazon, reinvent in Las Vegas, their big kickoff show for the year, and then goes out to the different geographies and goes out and talks to the customers, and actually goes and rolls out all the greatness of the cloud from Amazon's perspective. Of course, it's theCUBE covering it. A wall-to-wall -wall cloud coverage. I'm John Furrier, your co-host with Jeff Frick here today in New York City for special coverage. Jeff, uh, Amazon obviously continue to dominate, uh, but competition is heating up. Google Next is next week, we'll be there live. Uh, Microsoft's got a big show, Azure's gaining market share, Amazon's still racing ahead. They got a book they're giving out here called Ahead in the Cloud, Best Practices for Enterprise IT. Amazon, clearly, we talk about this all the time, have cleared the runway from winning the startups, small, medium-sized, growing business in the cloud native, to actually putting big dent in the market share for acquiring large enterprise customers. That has been their mission. That's Andy Jassy's mission, that's the team. Their headcount is, is growing. Jeff Bezos is the richest man in history of the world. Um, <laughs> Pretty impressive story we've been covering it's, you know, since 2012. What's crazy is it's barely got started, John. I mean, I was just looking up some numbers before we came on. Gartner has a bunch of uh, projected public cloud uh, TAMs, anywhere from 180 billion to 260 billion. So even with Amazon uh, at the head of the pace, I can't remember their last uh, statement, I think it was 18 billion uh, run rate and everybody's saying Microsoft's growing so fast, they've barely still scratched the surface and that I think is what's really scary. There'll be 50,000 people probably at reInvent. There's 10,000 here in New York. They have these summits all over the country, all over the world. And so as, as impressive as the story is, what I think is even crazier is we've barely just begun. You were just a public sector, yeah. that's a whole nother giant tranche that's growing. Well you're starting to see the uh, ecosystem develop nicely and cloud native certainly is a tailwind for overall Amazon. Obviously they have the winning cloud form, they've been ahead for many, many years. But again, competition is keeping up. But if you look behind us, you probably can't see in the cameras, it doesn't give justice, but this shows in New York City, it's a regional kind of like event. It's now looking the size of what reInvent was just a few years ago. Public Sector Summit, which is the global public sector that Teresa Carlson runs, and really it's third year and roughly since it got big, it started out a couple years ago, that's now morphing into size of reInvent, so pretty massive. Yeah, they said there's 10,000 <coughs> people here. Um, I don't know how many were at public sector. 138 sponsored, just some of the, the, the numbers that Werner shared in the keynote. Uh, 80 sessions, really an education session. It's a one day event. We're excited to be here, but it, what's amazing is even though um, pretty much every enterprise has something going on in the public cloud. In terms of the vast majority of their workloads, still most of them are not. And you yeah. know, really an interesting play. We were there when the AWS VMware announcement was made a couple years back in San Francisco as kind of this migration yeah. path that's both been really good for VMware and also really good for Amazon because now they have yeah. an answer to the kind of the enterprise uh, legacy uh, question. I mean, Jeff, if you look at the, the big picture, if you want to squint through the noise of the cloud, what's really going on is one, the analysts that are looking at market share, I think are looking at old data. It's hard to know who's really winning when they look about revenue, because everyone can bundle in revenue. For instance, Microsoft bundles office revenue in. So essentially, that's hard to understand. But if you look at the overall big picture, the landscape that's happening is that the enterprise and IT market is moved from being consumerization of IT to digital transformation. Those are the two buzzwords. But really what's happening is the operational model of cloud has created two real personas in the enterprise from a technical perspective. The developers who are building apps and operators who are running the infrastructure, running the software, running the dashboards, running the operations. And so you start to see that, that um, uh, interplay between operators and developers working together but yet decoupled different personas, these are the ones that are changing how work gets done. So the future of how work and computing is going to be applied for end user benefits, user benefit consumers, whether it's B2B or B2C companies, the cloud is the power engine of innovation and new apps are coming on faster and the roles are changing and this is causing a shift of value. This is what the analysts at Wikibon, the Cube Insights team has been looking at is that this is really the big thing and machine learning and AI really take advantage of that. And you're going to start to see IOT, security, AI, start to be the critical apps to take advantage of this power of the cloud. And as enterprises transform their operations and their development frameworks, then I think you're going to see a whole new level of innovation. Right, 
Well, they just had Epic Games on, uh, the, the company that makes Fortnite, which is a huge global phenomenon. If you don't know anything about it, ask somebody who's under the age of 15, they'll, they'll <laughs> tell you all about it. 135 amazing, million gamers. Right, and the, the core value proposition of cloud is still the same, right? It's flexibility, it's global reach, it's the ability to scale up and scale down. And we've asked this question before and we're getting closer and closer with each passing day. Is if we live in a world, John, with infinite compute, infinite bandwidth, and infinite store, basically priced at zero, asymptotically approaching zero, what could you build? And if you could get that to the, to the entire world instantly, what could you build? And we're really you know, getting closer and closer to that and it's a very different way to think about the world than whether you have to provision at 50% overhead yeah. and you got to buy it and plug it yeah. in and turn it on. And it's, uh, yeah. you know, that, that, that world is over. We're not I, going back, I don't think. The, if you look at the cloud players, you've got Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and then we'll throw Alibaba, that's more of a China thing. Those are the main ones, you got Oracle, throw Oracle and IBM in there. You look at the companies, and you look at the ones that have consumer experience, and you look at the ones that don't. Microsoft has failed in the consumer business, although they have some consumer stuff, really not, really been successful. Oracle, Microsoft, IBM have been business to business companies. Google and Amazon have been consumer companies that have bolted on a cloud just to run their operations. So to me, what's interesting is, which one of those sides of the streets, which one will emerge as the victorious cloud platform? I think I would bet on the consumer side. I like Google. I like Amazon uh, better than Azure and Oracle and IBM, mainly because they have consumer experience, they understand the ultimate end user and built clouds for that, and now are rolling out business. So the question is, will that be the better model than having an Azure or Oracle or IBM who know the business model, right. but yet, it, will the devices matter? So this is going to be a big uh, thing that we're going to watch on theCUBE, is which cloud play will win, or does it matter? Is it winner take all, winner take most? Yeah. This is the questions. It's pretty interesting. You know, you interviewed Mark Hurd many moons ago uh, for a long time, and he talked about cloudifying all the Oracle applications. The problem is Clayton Christensen's book, Innovator's Dilemma, still the best business book ever written. It's really hard to knock off your own core business, especially when it's profitable. That, I think, is Oracle's biggest problem. The other thing I think they have is they're a sales culture. It's built around yeah. a sales culture. People are going out and it's a hard sell. That's not what the cloud is all about. It's really the commercialization of shadow IT. I need it, I turn it on, I activate it, I don't need it anymore, I turn it down, I turn it off, I turn it over. So I, I think Oracle's in a tough position to, to eat, their, you know, eat their own business. IBM is, you know, continues to try different things and you know, with the weather company and Ustream and they're doing a lot of things, but the core three have such momentum Google, we'll see. We're excited to be there next week and kind of get an update yeah. on what their story is. But still, in the enterprise, they barely scratch the surface it, of I the think, available workload. I think that's, that's, the, that's, that's the main story. The huge. surface is just being scratched. If this is like the first or second inning of this game, or the second game of a doubleheader, as Madhu has said on theCUBE many times, he'll come on today, is interesting because if you think about the clouds that are best positioned to take advantage of new technologies, like AI, like blockchain, like token economics, those are the ones that have to be adaptable and flexible enough to take on new things because if we're just scratching the surface, the new things that are going to come out have to scale, have to be data driven, have to be mobile, have to use AI, have to have the compute power. If you're kind of stuck in the old model and you have a me too cloud, it's going to be always hard to ratchet up and kind of always re-architect and change. You need an architecture that can essentially be flexible and be adaptive. To me, I think that's what we're going to look for here in the interviews today. And of course, security, Jeff, continues to be the number one conversation. <laughs> in AWS right. reInvent uh, and re AWS Sub Public Sector Summit, security is getting better and better in the cloud, and some say it's better than on-premises security. I think the resources that can be applied at a company like AWS, the security teams, the technology, the, the, the hardening, the private fiber connections, I mean, so many things that they can apply because they have such scale that you just can't do as a private enterprise. The other thing, right, is that, is that people usually take better care of their customers than their own. And yeah. we know, as we know, a lot of security breaches and data breaches are disgruntled employees or somebody yeah. lost a laptop. They're, they're these types of things yeah. where if the, you're an actual vendor for someone else and you're responsible for their security, yeah. you know, you're going to be a little bit different, a little bit more diligent yeah. than kind of protecting what you're already inside and the And it wall. changes the infrastructure. I mean, just, just in the news this week, obviously Trump was in Helsinki. All I can say in my mind is, the servers, where are the servers, where are the servers? With the cloud, you don't need servers, the whole paradigm is shifting. If you use cloud, you can get encryption, you can get security. These are things that are going to start to, I think, be the table stakes for security. The idea of having a server, provisioning a server, managing servers per se, unless you're a cloud service provider, at some level, either tier two or tier one, 
you don't need servers. This is the serverless trend. Again, Lambda, functions, AI, application developers, all driving change. Again, two personas, operators and developers. This is what the swim lanes are starting to look at. We're starting to get that visibility. And of course, we'll get all the data here on theCUBE and share that with you. This week, today in New York City, live theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Stay with us from coverage here for AWS Summit 2018. We'll be right back.